Hey guys, Social P with a video on Elo Hell. Now, I have realized that Elo Hell is a very cliche topic, and to be honest, it's not something that I want to pander too much to. And I'm sure a lot of you guys, having seen the Tyler's video, have probably already lost faith in me. Like, no, Fox Rock, don't give in to the Elo Hell. All the arguments for Elo Hell and all the arguments against Elo Hell, for example, that if, according to you, everyone in your elo is an invalid then there will be five invalids on the enemy team and only four on your team so provided you yourself are not a dingus you stand the best chances of winning arguments like that are very valid and for 90 percent of the elo hell arguments i agree with them but you guys still message me oh i get a lot of questions about elo hell and so i thought it would save you guys a lot of time and it would save me a lot of time answering those questions if I just made a video on it. So this is kind of like my opinion on Elo Hell and my five set guide on how you can get out of it. So first off, I want to define what I mean by Elo Hell. I don't believe of Elo Hell in a traditional sense, but I have my own definition which I find to be true. And in my opinion, Elo Hell is the place where you are visibly better than everyone else around you, everyone else in your game, but not by a wide enough margin to carry them single-handedly. In the old days, I would say that was about 100 to 200 ELO below where you belong. And nowadays, it's probably two or three divisions, maybe three or four, maybe even one whole league below where you belong. Think of it this way. You are a dwarf in a game full of gnomes, but in order to carry solo queue, you need to be an ogre. And this can be an extremely frustrating and annoying place to be playing in, but I've gone through it several times and I have a pretty good experience of ELO Hell and kind of how how I like to break out of it. So this is just kind of my advice, my guides to helping you get out of it yourself. Now this isn't gonna turn you from a bronze player into a diamond player, but it maybe if you take this on board and if you find this does apply to you, you should be able to bump yourself up a few leagues. But if you find this doesn't really apply to you, then the chances are you're just playing at an elo where you belong and there's nothing wrong with that. So my first piece of advice is to specialise in something. The more you can specialise, the more you will achieve. In an ideal world, you would play one role and one champ only every single game. Of course, in reality, this isn't the case, but you get the idea. The more you specialise, the more you get used to the role and the champion, and the better you'll perform, and the more you'll carry. I suggest having one main role, and within that role, having one main champion, and then two or three alternative champions in that role, and also having one alternate role, and having one main champion in that role and two, three alternatives as well. Also, you do want some understanding of the other roles as well, but you really want to be focusing on one and have a decent understanding of the other one. And for the for your alternative role, I personally suggest you take up support because support is actually, you can do a lot more from support than people give credit for. And also support is often the role which is left open. Like you, you'll be able to get support quite a lot because no one else wants to play it. And if you learn how to play support and you play it well, then you will be able to win quite a lot of games. Now there are more examples of people using one champion to climb ELO than there are wigs in Britney Spears' wardrobe. For example, Friend and Lord only played mid. When he reached 3k ELO, he only played mid and he played a lot of Ari, he played a lot of Oriana. I personally play a lot of Lee Sin. I have like a 73% win ratio on Lee Sin. My friend, he only played Zerath in season two when Zerath was considered trash tier. And he has a very similar win ratio with him as well. But Genja did the same with Ash. Inverted Composure did the same with Singed. There are a plethora of examples of how this works. The second point is your consistency. You want to be playing consistently well. You need to be more consistent than the Blue Jackets off-season start date. You need to be playing well every game in and out. If you're not carrying each and every game you play, then you don't deserve to win. But if you are at a position where you think you do deserve to be climbing ranks, then this shouldn't be a problem for you. If you do play consistently well, you will win the majority of your games. Of course, there will be games where you play bad, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. Don't expect to win games where you do play bad, but don't tilt when that happens either. Just go on to the next game and carry that one instead. The third point, and probably the most important point, is to keep your frustration in check. Your elo hell is the most frustrating place for you to play in which is partially why it's the most vocal point of this game, people complaining about Elo Hell all the time. However, you cannot get mad and frustrated. There are buckets of reasons for you to justify throwing your monitor out of your window. There are so many morons in this game. You, you'd think it was a breeding grounds for politicians, but you need to keep yourself in check. Don't treat a loss as the end of the world. There will be games you can't win. Like Simply put, you won't win every single game, although every game is winnable. For example, since his release, Rumble has been one of the most dominant champions in solo queue. His win ratio has consistently been extremely high. 
And by extremely high, I mean his win ratio has been around like 56%. Now, if 56% win ratio is considered really, really good, then that means you're only winning 56 games out of 100. So you're losing 44 games every 100 games that you play. Now, statistically, this is fine. That's a really good ratio, like I said. But 44 losses in 100 games, that is a lot of losses. But the point of it is that these losses are natural. They happen. Like I said, don't treat a loss like the end of the world. Just emotionally forget about it and go on to your next game. Now, controlling your rage is a huge topic that I can't really go into too much detail about in this video. But one of the reasons you get so frustrated is because your goal is to win each and every single game. And when people do get in the way of your goal, you get extremely mad. So changing your goals really helps to stem your rage, which is kind of what leads me into my fourth point. And that point is that you should be focusing on yourself. League of Legends is a team game, but your solo queue rating is personal to you. Whenever you play, focus on your own game. It doesn't matter if top is feeding, are you playing well? Are you doing the best you can to carry the game? Worrying about the performance of your top laner will only make you play worse by distracting you and making you mad. And whatever you do, do not voice your displeasure in chat because this will crucify your chances of winning the game. It causes internal strife and makes everyone play worse. Stop giving a toss about your teammates' performances. You have to be mindful of how the game is developing, of course, like how fed the enemy are so you can play accordingly, but honestly, and this is probably going to raise a few eyebrows, you should be thanking your team when they feed. And that kind of brings on to my final point. So the final tip for getting out of your elo hell is to show humility and self-improvement. There is a positive correlation between the skill of an individual and their rating. There are no bronze players in diamond and there are no diamond players in bronze elo either. This means that the more you improve as a player, the more you will carry and the higher rating you will be. Take every game as a learning opportunity. Recognize what you did well and what you didn't do so well. There are way too many methods to go into detail here about self-improvement, but there are many, many resources to teach you about how you can self-improve. But maybe if this video gets popular enough, and does well and there's enough demand, I may be able to do one of those myself too. And what I was saying in my previous point about you should thank your teammates if they feed, basically playing versus fed enemies is challenging but offers you the opportunity to improve the most. It forces you to have to play stellar in order to win. Now obviously sometimes there's nothing you can do but there's a lot more you can take away from games where the enemy is fed when your team is feeding than you think. Now the humility aspect of this is something which I have covered in a previous video so if you want to check that video out you can click it on the screen now, there will be a link to it now in the screen but also in the description too. But the long and short of it is basically that you are you're too proud to recognise when you are making mistakes and when you're getting outplayed meaning you don't recognise these instances as learning opportunities meaning you just you don't improve. But a method I like to employ, so my personal method for dealing with my humility is what I like to call the holy shit method. When I'm playing, I say things to myself like, holy shit, I'm bad when I make a misplay, or holy shit, I got owned when I get outplayed, or holy shit, that was awesome when I do, or when I or my teammates do a really good play. This holy shit method really keeps my ego in check, but it also helps me make like mental notes, helps me recognize the elements of the game which I need to improve on, or which I need to continue to do. So that's kind of all for my little ELO Hell guide. I realize that I am not reinventing the wheel. I don't want to come across as your ELO Hell savior, that no one else is doing this and uh, all high and mighty and stuff. I just, I get this question a lot, like I said, so I wanted to make a little video about it for you guys. So hopefully you can take away something useful from it, even if uh, you didn't really like the whole topic anyway. But there is something I, I want to say as a little closing thought about ELO Hell is that I touched about this in the beginning as well, but sometimes you you aren't in ELO hell. You're just simply where you belong. And th there is nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being where you belong. There's nothing stopping you from improving either. There's nothing stopping you from becoming a higher ELO. You just need to focus on improving, becoming a better player, and you'll watch yourself climb. So thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you found it useful. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in my next video.